Kim K, racist teachers, the KKK slavery, Nate Parker, Brody Jenner, Ric Flair, woo, return of the Bronco, and more on today's Headlines with Headliners. Even I feel like dancing today. Hey. Even I feel like dancing today. Get it. Get it. Get it. Oh, you better come on now with some fire. Okay, on go it. ahead. <laughs> Mix it up. You it's the have bomb. A hell of a weekend. <laughs> there we go. Uh, Get it, let them feel oh, it light. Oh, we got some light. Hey. Da, da, da. That is right. Yeah. Hey. Do the police dance, do the police freeze, (laughs) pow, pow, freeze, pow, pow. All right, stop. (laughs) So what up, beautiful people? Let me tell you what you're doing. You're watching Headlines with Headliners. I am Nate Jackson, at Mr. Nate Jackson. Follow me on Instagram, Vine, Twitter. I'll beat y'all. I also got videos over on YouTube that you should be watching. Check me out Thursday nights on Wildin' Out. I got two incredible people with me. First one is... Yo, yo, yo. Yo, did did that feel like more ethnic? Like urban? Yo, yo, More yo. Animated. I am Tehran. You got to understand. I think, therefore, I am Tehran. Find me on social media at I am Tehran all across the board. The bathrobe heartthrob. We're in here. Bow. Bow. Yo, 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 yo. Okay. Said, up, yo, yo. How stereotypical are we today right now? <laughs> Hello, yo. I started dancing. <laughs> hey, I'm tap dancing right after this. <laughs> I'm tap dancing right now under this table. <laughs> Come on, Nene. All right. I am your girl, Kanisha Bus. You can follow me at Kanisha Is Comedy. Catch me on Sirius XM or over at All Deaf Digital. So, Kanisha, what's the ailment today? Okay, so you guys, I either have a toothache or an ear. Hypochondriac. She's That's dying. not funny, but Mount-Housen, I have tissue in my ears. I'm telling you, it's Munchausen. She makes up ailments just for the sympathy she gets. From I don't even get sympathy. That's A. You guys never are sympathetic. I my am knees. sympathetic. Uh, I am not. And two, it hurts. I wouldn't, it, they, it physically hurts, so I can't make it up. So you have Starbucks napkin inside your earlobe. Yeah, I do. Look, because if the wind or anything gets in it, it hurts. Okay. So the, it protects it. Hold what on. if it's your tooth? <laughs> Um, it's still the ear. When you have a toothache, it affects your ear. I don't know which tooth it is, but it is. A, I feel like it might be a tooth. So I, I, I've never had a toothache affect my ear. I've had toothaches. Yeah. They do affect I your had ear. A, when they're in the back? Yes, they do. They're one I, in one. No, I'm saying I've never had a toothache. Have uh-huh. you ever had an ear infection? No. Not since you were four months old. Not That's when then. you get ear infection. I wasn't in, I Yo. wasn't an infection. You were not an child. ear infected. How do you remember? Did you ask your mom afterwards? Like, did I ever I've have asked my infection? mom if I was like a sickly baby. She's like, no, you, you didn't even have ear infections. That's oh, that was, a, that, was a that was a statement. That was a statement. Okay, all babies I have to get accept them, I guess. it. Well, I told my mom my stomach hurt, and she goes, "Well, your stomach hurts since you were eight, so she doesn't even listen to me anymore." Oh well, I got the chicken pox when I was twenty-two. That's a thing. That's kind of late. That's yeah, like... I never had it. I just now I had the measles when I was a kid. I never got. I've never been sick. My parents were like, "You should get pox. your chicken pox out of the way." Yeah, so they made and me so there was like a chicken kid. pox outbreak mm-hmm. at school, and they were like, "You got it. You're just gonna have to do it." Yeah, that's what I had. Bad. So what did they do? They sent you in with the other kids. Well, because they told us, like, we have a chicken pox warning. You get it once, and then you're good. Yeah. No, I understand. Yeah. I understand the concept of chicken pox. Just no one was cared like about me enough to, to realize sure I had, had never had it. I guess, I guess I didn't get it as a child. I just never had it. But then I got full-blown chicken pox. But it lasted one day. It lasted oh, really? one day, yeah. Uh, so, And I've never been sick. I've never had a headache mm-hmm. in my life. Well, And I've never been sick. Were you never had a headache? Um, I don't know. I didn't ask you. Yeah, that were until breastfed. he was 16, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> never get sick. I've, right. n- I've just never been sick. I've never been sick. I've had ailments. Mm-hmm. For example, uh, I've eaten something that didn't agree with my stomach, right. but I didn't get sick. Like, I've never been, like, dying from it. You know, you just... Never had the flu? I never had the flu. Yeah, wow, I've had the... I get I... sick once a year. You do? Well, flu-wise. Oh, like, if you, if you smoke... Every time the seasons change, you are more susceptible to influenza like f- uh, symptoms for like three or four days. So there was a time. Nose, your like throat is itchy. Influenza was the number one killer in the world. You know what's the uh, number one killer in the world today? Police. Clowns. <laughs> oh, my bad. <laughs> same oh my God. I think it's the same answer. <laughs> Speaking of clowns, they're all over. They're all over the internet right now. There's these crazy clowns. Like, no picture. We have no picture for this. This is uh, just you guys breaking news. Yes. <laughs> yeah, they got the crazy clowns, and basically you're just like going for a walk, and you look to your left into the bushes, and there's a clown sitting there with a machete. 
and then they chase you. Yes, and so, it is. It's an epidemic right now, and I am terrified. Um, because of I just clowns, you're afraid of clowns. I'm not afraid. Just look on the I'm, internet, hashtag clowns. The crazy part is, I'm not afraid of clowns, but knowing that somebody in a clown costume that I cannot identify is you can't run up on me in your bathrobe if I didn't know you. Didn't so. your mom used to be a clown? My mother did used to be a clown, so she is very upset right now, and she's getting ready to make a Facebook video because she said clowns are giving the clowns a bad name right now, so she's highly upset about this. But you know what? I like she's the like, fact that she's willing matter. to do that. <laughs> what? No, she's not saying clown lives matter. She's actually doing the. She's taking the approach that I wish more police officers would take. No, she's is saying that the bad police are giving the good police a, a, a bad there name. She's if saying don't, don't blame giving, all clowns for the actions of a few bad clowns. Exactly. Basically, and but she's, she's really also upset. but she's mad at the clowns. Yes. She's not mad at the people. She's not at the mad. She's not mad at the people that are upset at the clowns. She's mad at the actual clown. Yes, that's the difference. Right. Exactly. She understands it's a why thing. people are. Well, afraid. The difference is a there's no system shot. set up for clowns to <laughs> for clowns to be held down. I need to understand. <laughs> was your mom a clown in a circus? Well, she used to do birthday parties and things like that. Because we can't act so. like. We she was a legit know. clown. No, my mother was a legit clown. Did she like, go to clown school? I don't know if she went to clown school, but she I've known my whole life she was a clown, and I remember it as a kid, her being a clown. Was she ever inappropriate? We're like, Mom, I need to sit down and talk to you. I'm pregnant. And she's like, got your nose. <laughs> <laughs> my mom still thinks I'm a virgin, um, A. B. Has she <laughs> ever watched this show? <laughs> no, she has oh, okay. not. So. Does your mom thinks you're a virgin? Yeah, I, well, I lie and act no, like that. No, why? Why did you say it like that? Like she's the complete. Because your mom has been to shows of a virgin. Yeah. Okay, but, she's but usually you can drunk talk about when she's stuff. there, right? No, she was at the show when you handed out the phone with the pickle video in it. She was there. I know. So how can she possibly? She, think it you're wasn't a, a pickle video asked, of her. It was another girl. Thank you. That's and real. I just act like I'm not. I don't. That is off limits. I could talk to my mom about anything in the world. When it comes to sex, I completely. What's shut your mom's down. name? Kimberly. Kimberly, if you're watching this, <laughs> your baby been smashed. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. She hasn't been irresponsible about it, but she has. Okay, what are we going to do get. about How does your clowns? mom sit? No, hold on. Your mom sits through sets where you talk about the Plan B pill vending machine. Yes. And still thinks you're not if active? If me and her sit down, then I will literally act like I never had sex. I think that you Good for you. Hey, are you know silly. What? Your mom it's knows. Not. To me, that shows a bit, of, uh, a bit of class. I actually really respect that. I really appreciate what, that. What, lying to your parents? No, it's not lying. It's it's the concept of having... It's like, re, you know, in church, they teach you to be God-fearing. Well, there's a fe there's a respect and fear. It's when you have so much respect for someone that you respect their opinion and, and you want them to have a good image of you. Mm -hmm. So you don't share everything. It's actually a form of respect. And it's something that happens in a lot of, th uh, like, overseas countries. No, that happens here, too. Like, my, I never let my parents see me smoke cigarettes. Exactly. It's something I don't smoke anymore. But when I did... I didn't. It's something very similar, you know, but it goes beyond that, but especially sexually. But here's the thing, though. Like, I would still come in the house and smell like I had smoked. Sure, but, but it's not. But I just never a, let them witness so, it. Well, my mom knew respect. I was pregnant twice, but she still think we don't, like, if we talk, don't talk about, about sex, we okay. don't. I'm, Story I, I'm number one. <laughs> <laughs> my mom knows I was pregnant twice, but, we still but doesn't, doesn't think that I have sex. Correct. She, 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 she should, thinks you're the Virgin not. Mary? Correct. No, you were she, good she, until that But I'm just saying she knows because I told her. But when we talk about it's like I never had have said like I can't she'll try to say something I completely shut down I, just I understand so and I respect thing. that your statement should be I don't communicate with my mother about sex like it's off limits for us yes versus my mom thinks that I'm still a virgin because but that's, I understand. Hey, why are you trying to ruin her Christmas right yeah, now? Why are you Grinch? Doing like yo, Christmas. she, she has a she has a belief in a belief system. Let me tell you something. Santa Claus. Hit these. <laughs> 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 here's that the thing: does he you not don't exist. smoke. You don't smoke in front of your parents. I, no, I, I don't for example, smoke I take my earrings out in front of my when I go home. I don't really. And it's not like my parents don't know I have earrings. I just take them out. It's out of respect. Mm -hmm. So I mean, we all have those subtle nuances. However, if I was going home and a clown was on my porch with the machete, <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't know if I would take out the earrings or just run away. Right? To say, lots know. of people are running. Oh, a lot yeah, of people, but some people are shooting. Some people are shooting. There was a Look, group of people shoot. that chased the clown in yes, a group. Yes, there was. The, little, the 16, 17 year if you're, with, if you're with a bunch of your friends and this happens, like it's not as scary because you already feel safe in numbers and all that. But if you're by yourself, go into the mailbox or something, <laughs> and, and a clown, clown is just across the, the street, they just stand there. And and, you're like, if they just stand there, I really would just They stand there and they swing I, their knife. Or and they, they like, laugh. They're like, <laughs> I would look. weird giggle. I think things are pranks sometimes, and they're not. Because I always just, assume something's a prank. If something's going awry, mm -hmm. I'm like, this is not real. And I continue to do stuff. Oh, it's real. 
Oh, it, I mean, I'm just saying. So I always I think, think some prank. of the clown things are like they're playing, but there's enough people who are literally crazy yes, that are attracted know. to seeing the attention that is drawing. Hundred percent. And just go but, get us a, just do it. Because like, not everybody's filming it. So they're, they're, it's not like somebody's hiding in the bush. Like, look at my friend be a clown. Some people now are just dressing up and scaring the living hell. Out I of was people. part mm -hmm. of a prank, and I, I'm gonna try to find the video. We gotta play it. Um, I was part of a prank where I didn't realize I was being pranked. Someone at the college jumped out of bushes and was trying to scare people, mm -hmm. and I was the next victim. But I didn't know that this was a prank, mm -hmm. and I just started punching them and stomping on them, not mm -hmm. knowing that it was. And it could have been a girl, and I would have. Not realize I would have. It was a reaction. Yeah, mm. it was react. I just, I just now I'm just starting to video where a guy like, jumped out of a trash can and do soccer oh, so hard God, he just I went right back yes. into the trash <laughs> I've can. I've seen that. It was like ah, oh, pow. I <laughs> literally. <laughs> that's exactly how and I that's felt. What you you rerun that race? It's a reaction. It wasn't you know had I known I would have went along with it. I just I didn't know. I don't like feeling nervous. Speaking of feeling nervous, story number one. Cool. Yeah. Cool segue. How I about mean, that? it worked for me. Kim Kardashian was nervous during this story when it was happening to her in real life. The Kardashian clan queen Kim Kardashian is now back home in NYC after being the victim of a robbery, allegedly, this past weekend in Paris during Fashion Week. Thieves dressed as policemen, now you know you can't trust the police, <laughs> entered a private apartment loft which Kim was staying in and threatened and handcuffed the concierge to gain entrance. Kim then al allegedly held, she was allegedly held at gunpoint, duct taped, and tied up as over $10 million of uh, jewelry and two cell phones were taken. A very shaken and anxious Kim returned to New York City to Kanye and family on Monday. Yes, and so the reason we keep saying allegedly is because a lot of people are speculating that this was a publicity stunt by Kanye who left a concert and was like I have to go for a family emergency which I don't understand because his concerts are all sold out what more publicity does this guy want mm -hmm. but we don't know we don't know the facts the concierge is not speaking no one's speaking up we don't know where her security was and we do know that one ring was almost five million dollars and then the rest of the jewelry was another about five million dollars. That's a lot. Right. That's a come up. To, to That's a major ring. That's yeah, a but people up. are gonna be. I mean, how you get that off? People looking for this ring. It, I mean, this isn't. This Break isn't. It apart. This is how. First of all, I'm not gonna like say anything. But my man Gergen is looking. No, like <laughs> <laughs> real. But I mean, you're also in Europe. This is a, like the art stealing capital right. of yeah. the entire planet, right. where you can steal a Picasso and sell it. I'm sure right. she can get. They'll probably Without get more money like, from this it because This is the infamous her. Kardashian ring. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And, and there's a private buyer that'll buy it. They also can melt it down, take the stones, and resell them. Make a new ring. Yeah. You just have to sit on it for a little while. You know what I was thinking about that I thought was funny? Like, if my phone got stolen, I would be, ups like, nervous about some of the pictures that I have in there. But when they said two phones are stolen, I'm like, I'm sure she doesn't care if any of those pictures service. But I wonder, is there going to be some nudes or something in there that are mysteriously going to hit the internet that she took ready for this? Like, even if it I wasn't set up? I doubt they'll hit the internet because the people who stole the jewelry obviously were professionals. They weren't just come up kids. What? These were guys who had this plan planned That's out. That's what I'm saying. So they can put and the only pictures one of the up phones without anybody knowing. Oh, who's the other phone belong to? We don't know yet. The guy that she was cheating on Kanye with. <laughs> Possibly. <laughs> Allegedly. Mm. I mean, but, but people are really, people are like really shocked by this. People are sad Because of the her. security. Because I seen a video of her a couple of days ago when she was walking by and a guy tried to sniff her butt and like 10 people jumped on him. Mm. So I'm just trying to figure out how... Who's getting fired? Because I told there's no you that security. I dropped some change and it happened to be near her butt. I did not try to. Oh, okay. Her butt. Well, Hilarious. they made it look like he tried yeah. to get a whiff. I think that it's real, and uh, if it's not real, we will get to the bottom of it with the same people who got to the bottom of Ryan Lochte's story. Because huh, it's the same people that robbed. Him. That's how people <laughs> feel. Same po people feel. Story number two: A Georgia teacher was fired this weekend for her racist post regarding Michelle Obama. This post is outrageous. That's her. Jane Wood Allen, here she is, of Chester T Elementary School in Gainesville, Georgia, was fired for her racist post on Facebook, which likened the first lady to a gorilla. Hmm. This post, seen here, was shown over 2,000 times after being screenshot at a Houston, and a Houston uh, PhD student, Ronnie Dean Buren. He shared it, and, yes. and 2,000 yeah. people... It got it just went like crazy. Like this teacher said this, so uh, it says it says this poor gorilla. How is she going to function in the real world by not having all of our? Uh, and I can't I can't. It's kind of small. 
luxurious vacation, not having all of her there we go. luxurious vacations paid for anymore. She needs to focus on getting a total makeover, respect, especially the hair. Instead of planning vacations, she is a disgrace to America. Uh, in fairness, that is kind of a bad hair shot of her. That's a, that's, that's a. In unfairness, no, we're not going to say there's anything wrong with that picture. That's a black woman with a hair back. There ain't nothing to do Hold with no gorilla in it. Kanisha was about to add in on this. I was going to say that I love Michelle. She's absolutely beautiful. All of us have pictures that catch us off guard, but I don't understand how this lady can talk about anybody because when we go back to her picture, she is terrible looking. All right, let's go Why back to that white woman. Why would you think that Jane, Jane racist Jane Woods. Wood Look at Jane. Allen. Oh, I'm sorry. Jane Wood Allen. She, By the way, she does look racist. All right, here she we go. does. She looks like she that looks thing like she from... uses the N-word every day. All right, here we go. We're going to hit her with a couple one-liners. You want to nope. go first, Ron? <laughs> no. I'll go first. <laughs> with your crooked bang having ass. <laughs> <laughs> with your eyes too far apart on the side of your head looking ass. I've told you I don't play these games with you. Just either. say something funny about her. <laughs> Jane, I wish you weren't racist. <laughs> it, it's actually, it's cruel. I'm going to say something, because uh, you're not going to kill these one-liners. <laughs> we got stuff we can say. Which, yo, I found out how to make this t-shirt on a tutorial on YouTube wearing ass. <laughs> What's your shoulders looking like Blade 4 looking ass? <laughs> Which, yo, I stayed outside for my suntan looking ass. Jane, I think your bangs look great on your <laughs> racist face. And I wish you would just open your mind and your heart to other people. With your life. extra meat around your neck having ass. <laughs> Why she look like an extra from Lilo and Stitch? Remember that? <laughs> <laughs> she also looked like an extra from SpongeBob SquarePants. Actually, she, uh, you're both wrong. She looks like she found Nemo, to oh, be very fair. Oh, oh, oh. She does. Look at how wide her eyes are. <laughs> look, oh, look at that. Buddy. Look at that. <laughs> Look at that. I just she looks like she would cheating. make a great killer she clown. A, she, I'll tell you that. Yeah. She would make a great killer clown. She got a, a mouthful not of that panties that right of, there. Not that that kind of talk is okay. I don't condone the negative connotations. Of man, anything. look at this lady, man. <laughs> Racist ass. This will teach on our children. This she was terrible. and it's elementary school teacher too, which yes. makes it worse. Yeah. So uh, it says the, the, um, the, the spokesperson from the school district stated that racism and discrimination are not tolerated in Fourth County and schools. And they fired her on Monday. Not people picked up the story. Not only did they pick up the Sean story King on my mm. on my timeline, people had found the school, the school district, the number, the principal's number, and they have everything. And everybody was calling, faxing, and sending in emails on top She's of that. And of I here. shared it a bunch of times. I don't agree with her being fired necessarily. You don't? I do not. Okay. And I'll tell you why. I understand that what she said is inappropriate. Mm -hmm. However, she said it on her own private time. Mm -hmm. And I'm having a hard time differentiating between mm -hmm. doing things on private time mm -hmm. and how it affects your job. And I'll tell you why. There's a bunch of pictures. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that you, myself, mm -hmm. you, oh, you definitely, Kanisha. Right. If we had jobs that were regular jobs, right. okay, we would not want to have our characters based on those private moments that we have. She might have been an excellent teacher. We do not know. What we do know is that this surfaced and now this is what her entire life has been based on. It's just this one perspective. Right. And that's just not fair. And I and I feel like with the law, it's one size fits all. So what's next? Is it gonna be the, pri the teacher that on his private time went to the strip club and had a picture with the stripper? Is he gonna get Does fired too? Does the stripper too? look like a child? Because then that's a, no. <laughs> then that's a thing. Okay, so here's the thing. There's certain occupations that you should you you can't be racist as a prerequisite. You can't be you can't because she's not choosing who she's teaching to, and her classroom is going to be full of different students of all kind of ethnic backgrounds. She can't have she can't be racist. Cops can't be racist. Sure, out, uh, but what we're saying is no. You can be racist, just not outwardly racist, right, and I'm, that's but, my problem. No, no, no. It's because now it's just these the people thing. are going to go into hiding. But you're saying the difference between doing it in the public eye and doing it in private, and they should be able to do whatever in private that's separate from publicly. And I'm telling you, that's the type of occupation where it matters because if you're racist, it's not a kind of thing you turn off and on just because. Oh, it's five o'clock. I'm punching, going home. Look at all these codes. So if she didn't post this, she would have been less racist. We would have just never known. No, we just wouldn't we have, have known. Never known. We should we thank her. We should have affects. the Jane Wood Allen <laughs> Appreciation Day. Thank you for letting us know your true colors. That's what it is. And what happens when this kind of stuff happens? They should silently arrest her and get rid of her because the other racist teachers learn from it. Like I can't exactly. say anything. Exactly. Now they're never going to show themselves. So there are training programs. Mm -hmm. We can have racially diverse training programs, sensitivity programs, mm -hmm. things of that nature. The reason why I'm a is because now, not only that, but now it's reinforcing this kind of behavior and it's going to drive the other potential racists underground. We're now not ever going to be able to pinpoint and locate them until.
<laughs> well, they're not going to learn from this because every other week somebody gets fired from their job for something they said on social media. So let's yeah, just keep true. on using this as the, the platform to catch them red-handed because they're comfortable. They're at home. They're on their phone. They're tweeting or whatever. And they, you know. They think they, they think no one sees it. They and when you say gorilla, you really are right. Like that's a, a race. It when you compare black people to monkeys gorilla. and poor gorillas and things like that, you it's it's ugly. And you don't yeah. know how that's affecting what has gone through in our classroom. Like if I was a parent, I would not want her at the school 100%. anymore. Or I would have my kids removed from that class at that point. You know what but I'm Toronto, saying? I guess he's going to go to the parent teacher meeting. And the teacher's going to say, "Well, I'm not racist uh, during office hours." No, my problem is. <laughs> oh, you're right. My just, problem no, is do. I need I. I have a, I, the distinction I have is that she did this on a private time, was on Facebook, shared something, and then people took that and enforced it at her job. And I don't know if that's okay. What if, it's a, what if she was a bank teller? Would we have done the same thing? Yes, we've done this to bank tellers before. So what are we what are we supposed to do? Not have private thoughts? But is that it, what it's it not is? a private thought Bank once you teller? put it on the world wide web. It's not a private thought anymore. Anything you put out on the social media or any type of internet, that's not no any longer a private thought because you have just shared it with everybody. You know what the effects of social media. It's not the first year that's around. You know that people are gonna see this and you said this for people to see it. A bank teller can be racist. Because they are providing a service that's based on numbers and transactions and everything's tracked and all that. Fine. But the person in the bank that's approving home loans and business loans and stuff, I'd prefer if they weren't racist yeah. because of then course. their prejudices can either, you know, It affects people. Where hinder. is the, the, the... The tellers are like, put this $5 in there. Yeah. <clears throat> but my thing is this isn't actually curbing racism. It's just maybe protecting racists from no, making I mean, I mean, sure mistakes. there's going to be some that are going to be like, well, let me put my head down so I don't get seen. But at the same time, this other one can, you know what? Thinking like this is clearly wrong. So let I me definitely just, think let she me should be fired. Yeah. I just feel like we should put more thought into this. You think she should not be fired? She should. She's but out of there. I just want you to know I that two like, minutes yeah. ago, you were like, she shouldn't be no, fired. No, I feel like this should have been, I'm sure she's done other things that defined her racism in the classroom that were overlooked. And that's what I feel like we need to instead of just so you would have rather like monitored her being racist in the classroom. I would have I would have taken a lot of parent complaints in the past into account instead of saying I have to catch you. Well, they can they can backtrack that the people that of that um, the people there can backtrack and be like, okay, these are the children she's been kicking out of class. These are the ones she's had suspended. These are the ones she's giving lower grades to. I'm sure it's I'm sure they used all that when they when they brought her up in the meeting in the file because she's not just going to take. uh, that light lightly, you know what I'm saying? So right. then they go, well, listen, let's do the background on you. And this is what we've been kind of overlooking at this point. This is uh, absolutely ridiculous. When stuff like that happens, you got to go in there, you got to figure out who she, who she socialized, who she's sitting with in the teacher's lounge. I need to know what re-education means. That means re-education her. Like, she needs to be re-educated. It's sensitivity yeah. training, something. She yeah. needs to it's learn. It's called race and pedagogy training, and it does exist. There you go. How about that? Uh-huh. How about that? And she can she can have that be a part of her thing. Uh, you know, you're fired, but uh, you can be considered for hi- being hired again in 2020. Exactly. After something like this, two full circuits of racist training. Because now she's definitely racist. You know that right yeah. now. She's like, the well, damn if, monkeys got me fired. Yes. If a white person <laughs> fired her, maybe she should be less racist. <laughs> you know. No, I think they should definitely send in a black person to fire or some they person of color. Should. Like, oh, really? <laughs> we got you. Right. And it handed her much. a banana on the way out. She probably knew she was fired. So we read your Facebook. (laughs) Which post? (laughs) All right, so story number three, a little bit more racism, but this is different. In the news with more case, three Florida high school students were suspended for showing up to school dressed as KKK members. Each of the three students whose names were withheld from the press for being minors received 10-day suspension sentences. What makes this story more interesting is the fact that all three were also minorities, two Middle Eastern kids and one Hispanic. No clear motive has been determined at this time. So there you have that. I'm just mad that they were brown. Like, why? Do you not? Do you guys not read enough of the news to know Middle East is not? <laughs> like, please stop. Listen, if you're brown, please stop doing wrong things. Please. Like, I'm begging you right now. Well, I think there's a cultural insensitivity. Like, they just don't understand. It's not like they. They don't have. They, well, they, they don't have the two, same two background Middle Easterns with the clan. and a Mexican are not gonna understand the strife that the African Americans have dealt with. Sure. This literally just looks like a crazy costume to them that's eligible to be worn at school. What I'm saying, first of all, people, kids at school thought that they were ghosts for a minute, <laughs> <laughs> realize what they were. But second of all, what I'm saying is, just brown people, like Middle Eastern people, please, like 
I'm half of you. Please stop doing. I feel this way towards black people too. Every time I watch the news, I have if there's like a shooting, I'm mm -hmm. like, please don't be black. Please don't be black. Please right. don't be brown. Please don't be brown. Like I actually, and it's sad, yeah, but I get is. happy when the shooter is white. Like I'm like, yes. <laughs> like just to keep it even. Just to, yeah. I mean, just or something, please. Like sheesh. So now, when I found out these kids were Middle Eastern, I felt some type of way. Like, why? Why? Like, why would you do this? Why would you think this is funny? Why? Right now, given the climate of America, mm -hmm. how did you think this was going to benefit anything but get you in trouble? Right. And they're like gangster. I don't know what these signs that are like. Those are definitely not the Klan signs. I don't know if this was. I don't know. I, it's I'm like just gangster. Speechless. I love you. Like, yeah, that that is. I love you in sign language. So I just I'm totally baffled by this but what you were saying yeah, they have no understanding the history that African Americans actually have especially at this age like we keep getting further and further they're even taking out sla slavery out of textbooks and calling us indentured servants it's getting ridiculous with the mm. way this stuff is even being taught and explained in the, in the schools and if you're not in black homes or around by to really understand then you end up being people of color that are doing this like come on now this is absolutely ridiculous I don't the level I don't of, even the know. level of ignorance which is not knowing what you don't know is high here now, the next story, somebody else dresses up, but it's not based on in, uh, ignorance. He knew what he was doing. So that's what makes this one interesting to me. Uh, they have a school, uh, and they have what's called Decades Day. And so everybody dresses up from a certain decade. They're used to seeing bell bottoms, leather jackets, afros, sideburns, etc. Yes. This young black man decided he was going to dress up from a period of his own choice and dressed up. As a slave. Slave. Came in, chain around his neck, mm. arms. Here's the picture. Chain, chains around his neck, arms, legs, shredded t-shirt, fake blood, a pitchfork, and a bag of cotton. And whip, <laughs> and whip cut shredded t-shirt. Where so did you in the get back. the pure cotton? Just hella Tylenol tops? Like, where do you get <laughs> Just, like, ripped out a pillowcase. Okay. So it says the school felt that the dress was inappropriate and suspended him. When asked why he dressed up in that manner, he stated, I wanted to be different. Oh, I thought he was do doing like some uh, Kendrick Lamar making a statement. He was up. kind of. He, you know he what actually, I'm saying? He's apparently a very politically minded, socially active student in school. His name's Brian Abe. Everyone knows him. He's done things in this nature before. His mom understood the suspension, was like, he should be suspended, okay. brought her home, but was like, I'm proud of my son for doing these things. Right. And he just went, and, and the school was like, it's making people feel uncomfortable. And I was thinking to myself, well, you know what was more uncomfortable? Probably slavery. Slavery. <laughs> slavery so was a lot more uncomfortable. If it's from that standpoint, then I get it. Right now, we're in a time where you need to face the facts, and if you're going to be uncomfortable, I'm going to put it in your face. I'm not sugarcoating it anymore. I'm not covering it up to make you feel better about what happened in the past. So I feel like if he was coming from that approach, then that's, that's fine. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's why I say there's no ignorance to it. Like, he was like, man, it, it, what's even sillier is that the school has decades day, and, and there's certain decades that people have to leave alone because they were dark times in our history. So we're just going to ignore slavery while you're making up all of your choices of outfits? Now, how would you guys feel because I, if a white kid came as a slave master to school, do, do you think that it's... Because I feel like they're, they're two totally different things, but I can see somebody because it's what they like to do is flip it and, you know... Well, well it's, it's different when somebody is uh, dressing up as the oppressor. Exactly. That's, that's what the I was difference. asking. It's you know the same. If I went as, you know, if someone goes as Hitler, that's inappropriate. Yes. Right. It's well, just his is kind of like never forget. Now, a Jewish girl could show up wearing a scarlet dress and be like, I'm Anne Frank yeah. type, you know, and you have to remember the Holocaust. There's a way to pay tribute to a thing without it's making homage it. homage without, and what he did, he had, the, he had the bolts, he had the chain around his neck, he had chain on his hands. And it looks real. You zoom in on him, it's got, you know, the pitchfork is bloody, everything. Like, he put some work into it. He, I mean, definitely put time into it. That's Yeah, that's and that's a serious like... decade, a 400 years worth of BS. So. <laughs> 40 decades. <laughs> Listen, How yeah. about that? Yeah, well, where, where are you from? Shh, look, where do you want to start? Um, I, I appreciate it from the nature of hearing the background of the story. I totally get it and understand it. So I mean, a lot of the stuff he has on him is, is uh, I think, takes an adult to even get a hold of. Like, how did he get authentic Those real shackles. Shackles. slavery shackles? <laughs> I, don't, I don't even know where to get shackles. Like, he, he stopped at a few stores. You guys yeah. don't, you don't carry shackles? Shackles? Ah. <laughs> stores are like, why does a black man need shackles? <laughs> but, I mean, I would, I, I hope to see more of this, actually, yeah. where, like, a Native American student goes in 
they're holding a blanket that's supposed to have smallpox, something, mm-hmm. you yeah. know? Like I would I would actually I actually appreciated what he did Bring it for its historical accuracy if, and if relevancy. It, if it's a person who experienced that in their past and their in their history, I think that this is a little bit more acceptable. Oh, he has I real think, slave feet. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> if Look a white this. if a white kid dressed up like a slave, I'd be like, This is hella offensive. He would get a, if an uh, Asian kid dressed up like a Holocaust victim, I'm like, this is hella offensive. But if it's your history, I'm okay with that. But what if it was a New York kid who dressed up like a 9-11 victim? Would you find that historically accurate or would you find that offensive? Uh, depends on how, was it tasteful? Who was it? You know what I mean? Like if he and wanted the, to be the, honored as a firefighter that had fallen or something like that. I don't, he's dressed up as a firefighter. But what if he came in like an amputee or something of that nature? I, I, I mean, I understand the if school's it, if the reluctance day, if This is the thing though. If the day was called uh, 9-11 Survivor Day or um, you know uh, t- Bad Days in New York History Day seems like that would be a little bit more acceptable yeah. to people but to just say Decades Day I mean we only have or so American many decades Inside before Jobs we were Day. actually before we actually were slaves I mean I understand why he did it I, I also understand the school's reluctance to allow him con- to continue the day I'm sure a lot of kids and teachers were both very uncomfortable I and think this offended. isn't something Open that you suspend a student no. for. I think this is something that they talk to the vice principal and they're like, put your clothes back on. They did. They told him to. He said he would not, and that's where... And that's what he's out of school for. That's what he went. It's not yeah, for and, his and, outfit. But I appreciate his suspension as opposed to the other kids who I validate their suspension. Like, they should have been suspended. Yeah. Ten days is not enough. You should have actually gotten expelled for something like that, to be honest. You're dressing up like KKK students. You should be expelled for something. But it's like based that. in ignorance. So what you do is you give them the instruction, you teach them the history behind it, and if they understand and have a, and they've grasped the understanding of how ridiculous what they just did was, and you see remorse, then you know you lessen the crime. I mean, you if they're like, I know the what teacher. I did, and they're niggas. You gotta get up. You, you right. out of there. I mean, we are living in where this younger generation though just has no. The younger generation, they're like they have no. This, this is a grown woman that did that. She knows better. Yeah. She knows better. Not so only that, she her, used she a different animal structure. other than gorilla. If she had called her a giraffe, you would have felt that was. I wouldn't have felt the same because historically, people they call black people monkeys, and it was used to degrade. We've never been just called giraffes, so I feel like it would have been totally different. But when you know you're being derogatory by using the word gorilla, mm-hmm. then that's where it makes the difference. At like you know exactly what you're saying. I. I just want a clarification. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. If you can't understand the correlation between monkeys and black people being used in, in regards I actually, to hate. I, I mean, I actually feel like a lot of these names don't apply. I've never seen... Actually, no. I've seen a couple people what? who look like gorillas. But I've seen that in a few They haven't races. just been... Exactly. It hasn't just been solely mm. we, black. Is there another race that is related to an animal all the time? Well, not no, necessarily but a race, but I feel like all people look like something. Like, I look exactly. like a rat. You a rat? Sorry, a rat. don't look like a rat. No, you yes, do Yes, I not. do. I look like you, a rat. We you all... look like you have a pigeon feel to me. No, like a pigeon. Yeah, I look like, like a, a beautiful rat. Pigeon. You're more of a bear. And like, you have that nice, cute little I look like a monkey. You're about to say monkey. No, Because I look like Curious George. What is Timon? I like big... What is Timon? What are those little animals that look up and Make sure everything's I'm a safe. muskrat? Oh You're yeah, yes. a meerkat. A meerkat? Yes. Yeah. Okay, we're definitely not playing this game. Well, you're like that was racist. <laughs> I feel like that's racist because meerkats are like middle oh Eastern animals. He's a, I like to the, move it. Move okay, it. All right, I'm, like I'm done, move I'm done it, with this game. We call you a camel. Now that would be <laughs> racist. I, I, I am surprised that things like this even still go on in 2016. Man. This is crazy. And I'm surprised that people don't understand what Brian was trying to do in Texas. And I'd like to remind people that these stories are from Georgia, Florida, and Texas. Yeah, right. Yeah. Now, here's my thing. If you see a black person that looks exactly like a monkey, shut up. Yeah. <laughs> Just don't All right. Here we go. Story number five. Nate Parker, who also dressed as a slave, is the star of a new movie, Birth of a Nation, addressed the recent uh, return of rape allegations. The actor, along with a friend, were accused of raping a fellow classmate while attending Penn State back in 1999. Parker was acquitted, mm-hmm. but his friend, former wrestling teammate and Birth of a Nation collaborator, was found guilty before his verdict was overturned on appeal. The accuser committed suicide in 2012. Mm-hmm. When asked about the rape and if he felt guilty for anything that happened that night by Anderson Cooper on 60 Minutes, Parker responded, I don't feel guilty. When pressed on the issue, Parker continued with saying, but, you know, at some point I have to say it, he went on choking up you know i feel falsely accused you know i went to court i sat in trial 
You know I was vindicated. Uh, I was proven innocent. I was vindicated, and I feel terrible that this woman isn't here, you know? I feel terrible that, you know, her family had to deal with that. But as I sit here, an apology is... Uh, no. 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 He just said, apology is... No. Both men have maintained their innocence in the matter. So there you go. Um, I did watch that interview, and I 100... I agreed with him when he said no as an apology because when you apologize for something, you're admitting some type of guilt. And if I didn't do anything, I can't, to make you feel better, apologize because then I still look in the little bit... I still look guilty, I feel like. Mm-hmm. I, I can I still, understand I that. feel that guilt. And, and, she, and he was saying that what had happened, everything was consensual, everything was what it was until he, that he had been accused. So I feel like... In retrospect, if she was still here, they kind of owe him an apology. Like, if you put somebody through something and you know that that's... It's hard to address, especially being a woman, but I also have had several friends that had been accused um, of a situation like this where it was false. And I hate the fact that there are women out there, and I hate to say it, that do falsely accuse people of certain reasons. And somebody who myself has, who has been a victim of something like this, it makes it hard for people to believe your story and to take it seriously when there's so many people that lie about it. And it just drives me crazy when women make up these stories for any reason, even in college, I knew a girl who wanted to switch schools because she her grades were bad, so she said something had happened to her just so she can go into another school. So things like that. That's it sad. just it's it's sick to me. It's, it's not very so many to me. girls who do this, but it's the girls that do do this. Make it hard. Make it extremely hard for all the girls that unfortunately are actual victims of sexual assault and rape, and it's just very unfortunate. Do I believe this ac- accuser's story? Necessarily, here's the sad part. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I yeah. don't not believe her. I don't. I do know that he was vindicated in a court of law. I also am under the mindset that I. I hope he did not. Mm-hmm. There's too many black men, black role models who are going down because of things like this. And when I say too many, I clearly mean Bill Cosby. Right. But the timing of these allegations and them being brought back up mm-hmm. is what interest me the most why do it before birth of a nation why not do it especially when they've made this and the uh the the turner rebellion and everything just in a much more positive light it's a remake why bring it up now Mm -hmm. why bring it up now when this is such a relevant movie it's it's already garnering oscar and academy talks and things of this nature why bring it in now? Why destroy his character now did they not know about this three years ago isn't anderson cooper the one that asked him what do you mean? I mean, how did it come no, up? No, it came up because it came up as a story. Yeah, people were and Anderson it up. Cooper asked him about the about stuff he this saw is, that was coming exact, up. Exactly, that was coming up. And so that's why he had to address it. He had not addressed it definitively up to this point. It's just very interesting timing. See, there was always that. Oh, no, it's not interesting. I'll tell you exactly what it is. He's about to have a movie, a film come out that he did himself that did very well in Sundance, and there's a lot of success on The Verge. His name is starting to buzz and ring, and the people who don't want to see him be successful made sure that this earthed up again. Yes. Or is this it's like a simple. racial, uh, the racist Illuminati against him? I mean, that's, that's the talk. Remember with the Cosby thing? It was the, he was thinking about buying NBC and all these things, and then all of a sudden, all this came out. Which, clearly, after the first 26 girls, I kind of got over. But with with Nate, it's just an interesting situation because is it his, his anti-fans, his haters, or is it actually the establishment not wanting this movie to see the light of day? Or is it somebody who is closer to the story that happened in 1999 that thinks that he actually got away scot-free when he shouldn't have? It's possible. But Based then, why, why, why wait till now? I see what you're saying. The timing is a little bit weird. And I, something else that kind of the way they asked the question about him knowing that the girl committed suicide, the way they kind of asked it was like she was still harboring feelings from what happened. And some of that is to blame. And I just didn't like Definitely. the way that it came no, but over. But she killed herself because, 13 years after this, it. it. And that's what I was saying. 13 years after that. Also, whether she did, t- like you said, we don't know. But she also was having emotional issues that go beyond whatever this situation mm-hmm. was and that have been... Possibly. possibly we can't tell we, a we victim tell. how to feel pain. Like we, we can't sit there and say, why did it take you 13 years? Or why did it take you two weeks to tell the cops? Or whatever it is. I totally Stop understand. Doing but that. I also, what my point was, the way that they asked him was putting some of that responsibility on him 100%. in that situation. 
And I thought that was a, 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 a unfair assumption to kind of put out there, the way that it was asked and the way that it... Um, Elephant in the out. room. Let's be honest. Do you think he did it? No. Nate? No. I don't, like you said, I don't know, but um, no. I, I No. The timing is just piss poor. You want you want to, you want to talk about it? You had you had uh you had 13 years before she passed away to actually have somebody validate it, and then you had any time since 2012 to to really be talking about it. When she committed suicide, story should have been real ripe then because she's the a past supposed victim. I, I, this is my thing. I'm a guy that's been through being falsely accused of something for the other person to try and benefit, and it was a uh, get good grade situation. She, uh, cause, um, in Washington State, I can't speak for. Everywhere. Was it the situation you brought up? Or she had was a whole nother thing. This is a whole nother thing. But so this is two. Oh, I can name four I, from my college. I the same definitely. Thing. What college you guys go to? <laughs> Washington State University. Definitely not partying there. I yeah, I wouldn't recommend it. But no. so essentially, uh, if you have a hardship or a family a family hardship, you can get your grades basically expunged from your transcript. Yes. For the time period that it happened, like if you lost a father. And you just went into a slump. They would be like, you know what? This isn't, this isn't, this isn't consistent with the grades that they already get. So we'll just, it'll be a wash. Deal with your hardship, and then get yeah. back to. And so they create this hardship, trying to get their grades expunged. You know what I'm saying? So I went through my whole thing. I got, I, I got my stuff was, uh, um, 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 expunged. No, it wasn't expunged. Expunged means I got, I was. It was dismissed. It, it was dismissed. It was dismissed in the local court. Then back, I went back into the school, and they were like, "Well, we have to err on the the safe side and just say you're caution, suspended." Yeah. So we appealed it, and then they removed that and said that I could continue to go to school with. Um, but in your story, it came out that the young lady was clearly lying. Like she admitted to lying later to like people and things of that nature, and it's just a big deal. No, I I don't know if she ever admitted to lying, but mine was never a rape. This is this is rape. That mine was never that. Mine was just like she tried to say that I was um uh sexually, uh, sexually forward. No, just like what apt out, like but too much. Basically. So there was witnesses that saw that that, that ain't the case and whatever. So um I had a 3.95 GPA at the time and it was easier for me to just transfer to a school that was 40 minutes away and everything and I actually got credits back from the university I went to before that so it was just fine we just, what we found out later was her GPA for the semester in question was literally like a zero all zeros she had to drop out of school anyway I saw her and then they said don't come back to school to the school for um, three years or like don't come back to Washington State University for three years or something like that in the original uh, penalty or whatever so in the appeal they had to remove everything and they just said I'd be on academic probation I'm like what a 395 I'll be talking to someone with worse grades than I had. So um, I just went to Eastern. But uh, the very next year, we went back for Mom's Weekend. Every year after that, and we even won a step show. We lost a step show. She was sitting in the crowd. So I would, like, see her in the audience of the step show where she is visiting during Mom's Weekend. And she was showing up. She had a baby by her, by her best friend's man that was in jail. He got her best friend pregnant before. Then he went to jail. Then he got out. Then he got her pregnant. So her and her best friend have the same shared the same baby's father. From like prison. I said, there's always a whole as bunch long of as you're not bitter, Nate. <laughs> At least you're not bitter. No, but you know what would be crazy if, say, another Honestly, few years like, from now, you're getting ready to drop this movie, all the stuff, and then and they then bring this, this comes up, out. and I right. feel like it's the same thing. Which, like, is, oh, which really? is a fear it of a mine fear. because it's like that. All of that was fine. And here's the thing: even though the the court dismissed and the school uh, overturned or whatever, I am susceptible to it's an accusation. But then they make they make they make the general public the court. By saying, yes. but are you biased because you thought you're saying he didn't do it because maybe because you feel like since I'm you didn't I, do I'm it? I'm biased, yeah. And his name is Nate. <laughs> and his name is Nate. <laughs> <laughs> See what I mean? Because when, when people are like, yeah, "Well, he little... didn't do it," I'm like, "We weren't there." I, no, I don't but know. I, I honestly, what he I did or did I, not do. I, I hope he did not do it. I'm okay with saying it. I do not know. I don't. I never even heard about anything happening in 1999 at Penn State, other than Penn State is already known for having a lot of sexual issues. Football wise, with the coach Sandusky and all them, yeah. So, uh, but I don't know. So he very well could have had some type of involvement. But what I will go off of is the law, and he was vindicated and he was let off. So I have to say that that's what it is. They had facts. I don't. I mean, he was he was found not guilty in a court of law, and that I don't know if that's enough, especially in the, these situations, since it's such a such a it's such a low percentage 
but they must have had something for it to go to court and that's how a lot of people feel like there must have been something substantial enough to go to an actual court. Well, sometimes people will consent to certain things, and if their feelings are hurt later afterwards, or the situation didn't go the way they wanted it to afterwards, or halfway through, you know, people kind of retract and like, all right, well, I'm over this, and you know, like you just never know what all the facts are. Right. But also, some people just get their feelings hurt and make up stuff. He does look like a young Denzel. I'll tell you that. Yeah. So. Like I, I'm, I'm interested to see how his career goes. But this is definitely a mark. So he's yeah. going to have to, I sh you shall overcome, brother. We'll All see. All right, so we'll move on to story number seven. We'll skip number six and get on to number seven. Number seven is Ric Flair. Oh, man. A name you haven't heard in, re in years and maybe would not know if you weren't a fan of WWF or WWE in the 90s, took to his self-titled show with the charge that he had engaged in sexual intercourse with Halle Berry Woo! in the 1990s, shortly after her divorce with baseball player David Justice. In regards to the alleged sexual encounter, the 67-year-old Flair detailed it as... She took a ride on Space Mountain. That's what he called it. <laughs> Flair says Barry is on a long list of celebrities who have taken rides on Space Mountain. However, when asked to reveal more names, Flair said, yeah, we'll just stick with her. Mm. Do you think he did it? I did. The, and the way he said it, too, it was like she wasn't, when it happened, she wasn't the Halle Berry we all know. It was just like D David Justice's chick, like whatever. So mm. it wasn't the Halle Berry. No, nah, Halle Berry's all always know. been Halle Berry. No, 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 no. She no. popped off after Boomerang. It was like, Pre Boomerang, mm -hmm. she wasn't this. Like this Halle Berry. This Halle. She's come on now. Uh, yo, Halle Halle. The Halle Berry we know. Okay. You know, isn't the same Halle Berry going to eighties into the nineties. I'm not crazy about Halle Berry. A dude's just be like, oh my god, Halle Berry, Halle Berry. I haven't seen her in person to like feel that glow or that aura about her. What I do know is there's not enough cakes. <laughs> like I don't, I am a cheesecake factory goer, and I need cupcakes, muffins, the, and biscuits on the back of that. Before you have to go on Urban Dictionary, he means. Ass. He means butt. This Jeez. is Black Hollywood Live. They yeah, know what the cake is. You don't know what booty mean. <laughs> <laughs> this is booty whole live. No, I'm just, <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. No disrespect to anybody here. But what if that's what the acronym was? I'm sure our producer is cracking up. And then he said booty whole live. <laughs> All right, so, um, so do, you do you think believe he did? It? Do you I believe it? Do I believe do it? Do you think he smashed Halle Berry? Wow, Ric Flair. Come what? on. <laughs> of course he did. First of all, we okay. all listen, Halle Woo! Berry in the 90s yes. was a jump off, and that is Hollywood lore. Like, that okay. is right there. There was a couple of them, you know? Like, people are calling Halle Berry. Who else Halle said Berry. they beat? Who else, who else said they beat Halle Berry? Yes. <laughs> Halle Berry, from what I understand, this is all alleged, but Tyra yeah. Banks and Halle Berry were just the go-to. Okay. The go the jump off. They were with the crew. They were like, yeah, suicide kings. It. You know what I'm saying? Suicide kings. They were the suicide <laughs> squad just jumping off. Okay. Like that's the word on the street okay. of Hollywood. That's okay, the word okay. on Sunset. So do I think Ric Flair at the height, like when Ric Flair was Ric Flair basically, right. do I think he hit? Yeah. yeah. Yes, he you did. You too? Yeah, I think I he did. Look at that. I and say, Halle Berry likes white guys. Did you see Monsters she Ball? Likes white That's guys. what I'm going to base it off of. I would she say no, white guys. but Monsters Ball was so real. Like, real. I think they actually real. beat on camera. That's what people say. People are saying that they had sex on camera. Just like completely method acted and went ahead and did it. And it's not like the one, first and only time that something like that's happened on camera. So Who else has really had sex in a film? You know, I don't know names. I want to say her name is Chloe Severandy or something and her husband was the uh, was the director of the okay. movie and she had sex I mean that's a true story she had that's sex a, with the director with the director who's who was her husband or boyfriend at the time and the, like and it was in the movie in the movie so he directed it and he was one of the actors he was in, I in thought you were going to say he scene. directed somebody else to sleep with his wife right. I'd be like hold like, up not hold really up. Enough. which is also proposal. one of the rumors is that there was an, a director and once again I'm, I, I'm horrible with names when it comes that's to that's fine just keep going with the story but the story <laughs> is he directed a young man it wasn't real enough wasn't real enough and then he finally said you need to sleep with her and they got the performance and this is a movie we've all seen I just can't remember the and details. the girl was with it the whole time like he could, I mean, if he wants to hit, I mean, I don't but know. I'm just saying, I could believe that monsters, monsters ball was hot and heavy. That like, I was like, there's a lot more than acting. And it ball. wasn't I watch porn. And I mean, this was like, it a, wasn't yeah, pretty. It, it was, was raw. Yeah, it wasn't sensual. Yeah. It was like real. And, it had some flair to it. Billy yeah. Bob looked like he he Thornton. Listen, I swear, <laughs> I was about to say that. I just think that there's a comfortability that she showed in that scene, whether it was real or not, that yeah. made it feel like she was comfortable <laughs> with the idea. Oh, and she's, and he's close enough to a Ric Flair, Flair type of dude that yeah. I Rode would say, that space mountain. Yeah. 
First Woo! of all, Space Mountain, that sounds fun. <laughs> sounds like some like, Ric Flair thing to say. Yes. Because he said it. He's much older than her, though. So there was like a brief period of time where she was old enough to make that even make sense. And it just doesn't look like this. Like is right a, now, you're like, This no. isn't going to work right now. Like he, <laughs> he, It's Hollywood, though. In Hollywood, 40 is the new is the 12 new, and a half. <laughs> sleep with the 20. And here's the thing. I actually know a, a, co- a comedian that we all know. Okay. That we all know. Yeah. Who was smashing off Miley Cyrus when she was 19, and he was definitely 40, <laughs> 45. Easily. Easy. Hmm. See, this is why I sleep with You like, want initials? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Can't do that. Oh! Can't do that. Why off? I can't do that. I can't do that. But I will tell you say this. Say one of his jokes. I'm from Washington, D.C. That's all I'm going to say. I'm from D.C. All right. I won't yeah. give initials, but I'm from I know exactly who it is. You're really good. (laughs) Like, that's where I'm from. I don't know. You're from Seattle? From Seattle? Yes. Yeah. Well, Tacoma. Olympia. Tacoma. Oh, Olympia? Yeah. Oh, okay. That's a nice place. Somebody just told me they know you. Somebody, which is crazy. Totally. I'm from Washington, just W.A., Washington. Yeah, yeah if we're gonna so go it wasn't with initials, a WA, but... If we're going to go with initials. Yeah. <laughs> all right, so this has been uh, our episode today. I want to make sure that you guys know where to follow all of us at. I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. We have Please. two minutes. Yeah. We have no, two... let me finish saying this. You got to leave some good stuff in the comments below because Teron and me and Kanisha, we go in there and we read like, let me see what the people say. <laughs> we do, and we, we talk back. Do. <laughs> and we get mad. And we talk smack. Yo, you know hey, and if y'all say one more thing about my bathroom, <laughs> Hilarious. No one's Make sure you leave something in the comments. And then in this last minute and 50 seconds, tell them where they can find you and what you have uh, coming up. They can find up. me at I am Ter- We're not going to talk about the Bronco? Bronco. Well, if you want to. Hurry up. We I really like the Bronco. All right. The Bronco is back. Well, not yet, but it will be. It 2018 will. at the earliest. 2020 most likely. I really like this. You don't think that's nice? It's I think nice. That, I think it's. I think it's. Uh, it's real nice, and I think it's going to be a very short amount of time before brothers got that pimped out. I was gonna say it looks like the upgrade of the car that killed Ricky. Like this is the next level. No, isn't of... this? Doesn't it look like you can marry, then get divorced by a white woman, kill her and her alleged boyfriend, and then drive away really slow? I just think. Yeah, he's saying it looks like a new OJ. I think it looks strong. Like it probably is fast too. You know, there's probably a lot of room in that back seat. Well, that one does look like a gangster one though, because yeah, it's red. It's like, like blood. Yeah. <laughs> but I just thought it. I you gotta just... lower that. Get a solid grill. Get that roll bar off the front. Put some forties on it. <laughs> I mean, it's got, I mean, here's the thing that I appreciate about this car the most is that even though Ford recently removed the focus, um, the focus plant from Michigan, mm-hmm. they are going to make sure that the Bronco and the Ranger, which they're also going to bring back, are both made in Michigan. Oh, that's so I'd like to see the that. Ranger. Starting it off again. Now, we'll wrap up the show. Tell them, now where, they we can, can tell them where they can find you. At Mondays time. and Thursdays at the Laugh Factory every single week. Fridays and Saturdays in Long Beach Laugh Factory. Also find me on So Me on Fox. But most importantly, please, please, please follow me on social media, Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, at I am Tehran. I'm almost at a million followers. I just need a million people to follow me. Please. Hey, hey, this is your girl, Kanisha Bus. Kanisha is comedy on all social media. Catch me at All Deaf Digital and Sirius XM. Check it out. If you're watching this on the day that it's uploaded, you can watch me tomorrow. I'll be at Winston-Salem University in North Carolina. Uh, the following weekend, I'll be performing at the Sacramento... Uh, Tommy T's in Rancho Cordova with uh, Phase on Love and Friends. Check me out at NateJacksonComedy.com and you can see my updated schedule. We love y'all. Headlines with Headliners. Please follow me. Please. Please follow me. From executives Kevin Undergaro, Dario Kristen, Tiana Hobson, and the entire BHL staff, we would like to thank you for supporting Black Hollywood Live, the first online broadcast network dedicated to African American entertainment. For questions and comments, contact us. Info at BlackHollywoodLive.com. Like us on Facebook, tweet us, or Instagram at BHL Online. And I am the official voice of Black Hollywood Live, Scipio, Instagram at King XO Bay. Thanks for tuning in. The views expressed here are those of the host only and do not necessarily reflect the views of BHL or its owners or principals.